what up guys so this video is going to be a test recap of the test that i just took recently about urinary elimination boom so this test oh it's pretty upfront for me it's pretty upfront the thing about this exam is you need to know for fundamentals it's all about training your mind to know certain facts certain facts that you need to just keep in your brain you just need to know it. it's there and i'm going to go over it this isn't a cheap video this is a review this is a review for the things that you should know these information are facts that you're expected to know by the time when you move over to med -Cert. you need to know these information my teacher and your teacher is completely different my class and your class is completely different my task and your task will be completely different all right i got my powerpoint that my professor gave to us and there's certain things that showed up that showed up in the exam and there's certain things that you should i'm gonna use this as a guideline for you to just remember you need to remember about regular the average urine output their average urine output is 1500 to 3000 ml ml all right now the thing with that is when, when it comes to urine output, urine output is going to be changed. It's going to be changed based on your intake, changed based on hormones. Like if you're taking diuretics, of course you're going to come out nowhere, your output will be higher. If you're taking anti-diuretic, of course your output will be less. If you're drinking a lot of fluid, you're going to be peeing out a lot of pee. If you're taking a little bit of fluid, you're going to be peeing a little bit of pee. Terms. There's important terms that you need to just boom. Oluria, aluria. Oluria, aluria. There's values in that. Oluria is 500 ml. Output QD. 500 ml. Output within one day. That's considered to be oluria. Less than 100 ml is considered to be a urea so 100 ml on a day output is considered to be a urea specimen you need to know about specimen bro you need to understand about specimen when they say random random is usually associated the urine analysis that's basically here's a cup pee in it go oh clean catch here go here go clean catch clean catch is you pee you catch so you pee halfway when you're peeing halfway you catch it then that's it you pee the remaining that right that's a clean catch 24 hour count okay here's a jug pee in it but one thing that you also got to remember is your first pee of the day you need to throw it out so if you wake up they tell you i'll oh, start collecting starting at eight o'clock right starting at eight o'clock if you wake up at eight o'clock you need to pee that don't mean that you collect that first pee therefore what you do is wake up at eight o'clock you pee it out throw it in the toilet pee the whole thing out just throw it away right from your first void you collect all the way through and that's basically the 24 hour now there's certain things that you also need to know about things that you're like whoa this isn't good one thing is red blood cells red blood cells in urine no good red blood cells in urine it's just urine with blood there's a couple of reasons why is that it could be it could be from the super series as in oh there's something wrong with you lamarius or whatever or it could be something with the girl is having the period and there's blood in the urine that's it or it could be like stones and stuff like that the one that you're like wow this is serious is when you see protein in the urine protein urea protein urea is a serious thing it's not good that basically that means that there's something wrong with the glomerulus during the filtration of urine glomerulus while it's sucking out what what it's supposed to be filtering is solutes not cells not protein not like not red blood cells and stuff like that that shouldn't be in your pee since we're talking about cells one thing that you, you should not have in your urine is basically white blood cells leukocytes leukocytes should not be in your urine that tells you that you have an infection uti probably and since we're talking about uti also remember that when it comes down to uti the most common is e coli why because it's right there they're like next door neighbors e coli e coli if you don't know e coli is like when you poop there's a e. coli in your doo-doo and you don't want to introduce that therefore your patient teaching for white from front back clean to the dirtiest well yeah clean to the dirtiest boom glucose glucoyuria glucoyuria is when you have glucose in your urine that's not a good thing that basically means that just having an overload of glucose in your system is basically the body's going yo we got mad sugar in our body we need to flush this out so there's the symptoms that happens with di diabetic uh, medalist patients 
where they have a thirst. I'm so thirsty and they're peeing a lot. It's basically the body's automatic response going, get out. You need to pee. You need to let all this stuff out. Pyuria, pyureas, you know, pus in your urine, infection, UTI, coli. Boom. Urine retention. Retention. Urine retention is basically your kidneys is producing urine and it's going down to your bladder. But the thing is, it's not coming out. So in your bladder, you have at least 50 ml, 50 ml in your urine. That means that you have your retention. The first action will probably be catheterized. Straight calf probably. They'll start off with straight calf because it's not as invasive as an indwelling catheter because an indwelling catheter is basically like, it's like opening the door to the club and the club is caught in your bladder and that's how you get cystitis and UTI and all that nastiness. Indwelling catheter is for entry. Tyria. This urea is having a difficulty of peeing. Frequency and urgency. When you're dealing with this urea, you're associating that with UTI. And again, most common cause for UTI is E. coli. Incontinence. Incontinence is inability to control. And there's different types of incontinence. Stress. Stress is weak pelvis. So basically, if the, if the person sneezes, cough, all those things, since your pelvis is so weak, your, the pelvic wall is so weak, you pee a little bit. There's a little bit of dribbling. Functional. Functional is basically, I'm in a cast, the bathroom is there, I can't go over there, and you know, you know that you, since you can't go over there, you know that you can't go over there. It's basically on function you can't functionally go over there urge urge sounds like the same because you need to go over there but you you need to go to the bathroom unfortunately you can't control it urges it's too far and i can't make it and boom i got an accident total total is like more related to coma patients overflow Overflow is more common with nurses because nurses is always usually usually holding your urine they're holding their pee because they're like, oh, I gotta do charting. I have to get meds. I have to let. So it's sometimes it's an overflow. It's just overflowing. Catheterization. You want to go from least invasive to invasive. The least invasive is basically an intimated, a straight calf. A catheter that you go in, go out, go in, go out. The patient will have residual urine because you want that to be out. You don't want all that urine to be all up in your system because the build up of urine, you know, that's asking, hey, I don't want to get an infection. So you straight calf them. And you don't want to give them an indwelling if they're, you know, because if you give them an indwelling, like I said earlier, you're going to have, it's basically open the door and going, guess what, guys? I have an open door. This is a port of entry. Let's have a UTI party. And you don't want that to happen. Now, the procedures, when it, when it comes down to catheterization but there's key points where like you always gotta know between those two between those two you need to know generally and apply for both of them one they need to clean up if it's dirty you need to do peri care after that it's just both of them are sterile procedures aside from that both of them you need to sterilize the area well not sterilize you know you need to clean up the area the genital area both of them while inserting the confirmation of urine out urine coming out the catheter for males the way you're cleaning it up if they're you know if they're uncircumcised you have to pull you have to clean peri care first then after you're gonna clean right when you're cleaning you're gonna prepare the supply it's a long thing i can't really go into it because it's hard for you to visualize it with me saying it to you, but we're just talk we're gonna skip into the insertion part, right? I mean the cleaning part, the cleaning part. When you're cleaning, it's inward out. I think I said that earlier. Ah, right, no, just in case, inward out. So you're usually gonna have four swabs. Some some places you have four swabs. Down, 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 right? And we're talking about down, throw it away, down, throw it away, down, throw it away, down, throw it away. If you're expected to tell you in or outward around you follow whatever your instructor says because you know why i'm not giving you your grade as your instructor so inward boom inward out throw away other one inward out throw it away inward out going what when i mean inward out inward out as in you're pushing it away because you don't want to introduce right for females Female. Imagine this is the um, uh, meters, right? You're gonna clean from the father. So if you're from here, you're gonna clean here first, right? You're gonna take up the wipe, wipe, throw it away. Then wipe, throw it away. Then the very last middle, wipe, throw it away. And of course, you're gonna insert. One thing you need to know too when you're inserting, if you put it in the wrong hole, leave it there. Facts. Leave it there. Leave it there because 
at least you know we're not to insert right leave it there and before you insert insert the next one boom and confirmation for your output where you're at is your output the length for female is one to three inches with confirmation of urine flowing out right if you have a question that comes out or one two three one two three don't mean nothing right because everyone's body is completely different maybe it's four well that's pretty deep but one two three right with urine output for males on the other hand it's six to eight six to eight a day but the confirmation is urine output six to eight with urine output placement that's where you're at boom you're right there and when you're inserting it when you're inserting it looks like this is the bladder right when you're inserting it boom you see urine flow that don't mean for you to start inflating you're gonna push one inch in and inflate one to two inches inflate and that means you're in why because you don't want to be inflating it while it's in the urethra also too is you're gonna pay attention to the face because you don't want the face if the face goes <gasps> that means you're in the wrong place my friend that means you need to push in more because that 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 it hurt you know I mean it's a tight hole and no good if there's a question between catheterizing between a residual a indwelling or a straight straight calf first and if it comes down to the point where oh urine output i forgot to mention it when it comes down to urine output urine output is 30 ml 30 ml 30 ml is urine output every one hour 30 ml one hour urine out 30 ml one hour urine up and i think i went through everything basically and there's like you know there's certain things too that you need to know when when the patient needs to go to the bathroom right with bedpan the very last thing is you're gonna have to lift the bed up because they can't pee lying down that actually showed up in my exam what showed up in my exam a whole bunch of things like um urine retention residual um urine um urine residual retention okay that one right catheterization that showed up the value 50 50 ml 150 ml qd a urea i mean well that sh that actually showed up but the term is 100 accepto and textbook term is 100 or less meaning 25 50 75 or whatever value less than 100 ml qd a urea less than 400 ml or urea protein in your urine that showed up glomerulus problem a question about pyridium i don't think i brought it up before it turns your pee into orange red orange red orange so one thing that you're gonna know is you're gonna tell the patient be like you know you can't wear your sexy underwear my dudes like i know you're trying to look all sexy for your boo but don't do it because you're gonna have orange pee and that's not gonna look you again oh one thing too with uti uti stuff came up uti stuff came up the thing with uti is the best way to not have uti is pee a lot especially after intercourse pee a lot mad water pee a lot drink mad water pee a lot prunes is good too oh i'll help you keep it acidic because you don't want to be alkaline i know you're, you're probably like well alkaline i need to be concentrated no no don't think like that Fundamental student, the fundamental students, I can't imagine you guys be like, well, hold in the urine, it will become more acidic. No, because the thing is, you can't swim up Niagara Falls. That's why you drink my fluid, pee it up. Plus, if a patient popped out nowhere, like, oh, maybe the best way for me to prevent UTI is um, discourage drinking. No, that's not the best way for you to prevent UTI. That's not a good thing for you to, to even think. That's a horrible way of thinking. Why? Because you're gonna have fluid imbalance, and fluid imbalance is a serious thing. Specimen capture stuff showed up. Red blood cell, white blood cell showed up. Glucose showed up. Um, this urea stuff showed up. Pyuria. I didn't I didn't mention pyuria. Pyuria is a lot of volume of peeing. It's just a lot of volume of peeing. Like you go into the bathroom a lot in large volume. And that's more related to um that's really related to diabetes and septus. If you're drinking mad fluid, it's gonna be less concentrated. If you're drinking a little bit of fluid, it's gonna be mad concentrated. Why? Because there's not enough fluid matrix, so all the solid stuff is going to be aware. Therefore, your gravity is going to be heavier. Why is it going to be heavier? Because you got more solid-ish all up in there. 
my dudes. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say, man. I know it's a lot of information. I feel your pain, bro. You gotta do what you gotta do. Get it popping, and you, you need to hustle. Hopefully, you actually stayed all the way to the end of this video. Please like and subscribe. And always remember, be happy, my dudes. Psst.